I'm, I'm, I'm in a uh, debate between where to go this morning. But let's go, if you will, to the book of Ephesians. Uh, I think we'll maybe finish up um, next. I was gonna I'm going to finish up um, the purpose of the or benefits of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I think this morning we are going to go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Actually, chapter 2. And this is going to be the spontaneous Mother's Day message you've never heard before from Pastor Ed. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2, before we get into that. You know, moms are, are a, um, the relationship between children and their moms is, is different. Uh, I've never watched a football game yet where the athlete gets, I mean, you can get these 6'7", 6'9", 6'10", 280 to 320 linemen, you know, got the camera on them, and I've never turned around and said, had them go, hey, Dad. <laughs> Have you ever seen it? Never, they, do, they do soup commercials, you know, with pro quarterbacks and athletes, and not one time is Dad cooking the soup. For the, for the son or for the team? or How I many of you know I'm talking about? Who is it all the time? Mom. There's a unique, and it's because of the nurturing nature of mothers. And, um, you know, and you can have a serial rapist murderer um, cannibal, and mom is still there to defend them. That's my baby. A number of years ago, I was at a bank down in Greenville. Now, we're from Greenville, North Carolina. And so we refer, everybody refers to that as down east. Now, east is not down, but in their eastern North Carolina, they call it down east. Go figure. I mean, I just, I guess, I don't know. You know, just, what, what do you say? I mean, it's down east. That's what they call it. We even had a down east mall. I mean, you know, uh, it's just, you know, it's just interesting. So Greenville's considered in the part of the country called down east. And, um, and I went to the bank for the church one day, that, uh, our church we were in. I'd, I'd take a deposit to the, to the church, to the bank. And there was, this, there was this lady at the line, and she started talking to the teller, saying, well, my, now my baby, and my baby, and she kept going on about 10 minutes talking about her baby. She's trying to make a deposit, withdraw money, do something at the bank for her baby. And, uh, and finally the teller looked at her and said, ma'am, because you're talking about bank account, the money, and all this kind of stuff for her baby. She says, ma'am, how old is your baby? Is she 18? Yeah. And that lady looked at her and said, the teller just said, ma'am, your baby going to have to come down here and do this for herself. But see, mama still thinks him as their babies. They're still your babies. Amen? They'll always be your babies. It doesn't matter. I mean, they could be on death row getting ready to get executed and they're still your babies. There's a, there's a relationship there between a mother and the child. It has to do with the nurturing. It has to do with the giving of birth. It has to do with, you know, uh, even, even, even adoptive mothers. Because of the nature of motherhood, that, that bond is made. I mean, let me say this to any of, adoptive, of our adoptive mothers. Just because you adopted doesn't mean, and you didn't carry the baby in your womb, doesn't mean that that connection hasn't been made. Because I, I believe, because you made the choice to adopt and to love that child, God supernaturally bonds you to that child, even as if you had carried them yourself. Amen. You made that. God's, God's good. And there's just something in mothers that make them want to nurture and to care and, and, and to love a child. And, uh, and then those children, re they realize that love. You can have some of that. How I mean, do you think about some of these athletes you've seen? Now, there's another man out there. They won't think twice about taking their head off. They'll turn around and talk about, then they start talking about their mom, cry about their moms. It kind of makes you think of Rosie Greer uh, knitting or, 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 or cross-stitching. You know, in those old commercials with Rosie Greer cross-stitching, you know, and stuff. Rosie got saved, by the way. He gave up the beer and got a hold of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, but I'm telling you there's a relationship there. Now let me say this. That came from somewhere. That type of nurtured love relationship came from somewhere. Now I know that God is referred to as the Father and, and Jesus as the Son, but I want you to know that the love of God has a nurturing element in it. God nurtures us. Amen. As a matter of fact, his Old Testament name that we love to preach on. How many love that sermon? El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. How many love that sermon? How many ever heard that sermon? Hallelujah. I want you to know, you know, start preaching on God as El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. He meets all of your needs. He has more than enough to supply everything you have need of. Well, here's where it comes. The word El, 
uh, El Shaddai. Shaddai comes from the Hebrew Shad, which is breast. And El Shaddai meant literally in the, in the Hebrew, not the Greek, in the Hebrew, the many-breasted one. In other words, there was more supply than you had need. Are you here? I said there was more supply. God has more supply than you have need. He's the many-breasted one. It doesn't matter what your need is. There's more than enough. Amen. And so that's for that whole, you know, King James translates it almighty God, but the, literally the many-breasted one, the God who's more than enough, the all-sufficient one. Well, so that, that nurturing sign of the love of God, hallelujah, I mean, it is what women, that women have came out of God. I said that came out of God. So when we, we begin to talk about a mother's love and that kind of thing, really it is a similitude of something that came out of the love of God. God is love. He loves you. He's for you. I, I know for, for centuries and dec for decades and centuries, and even sometimes you might think of in, in the sense of millennia, we have presented God as the angry God, mad God, kill God. You know, we joke. You know, if somebody says something really bad, you know, we step away from them and say, I don't want to get hit by lightning, thinking God's going to strike them out of heaven. Y'all yeah. hear you going home. I mean, you know, we think we're going to be a grease spot on the floor because God's going to get you for that. If God was going to get you, he done got you. Oh, yeah. If God's purpose was to get you, he would have done got you. Y'all get that language? I know that's not polished, but I'm not polished, and who cares? Most people don't understand polished. You know, you go to some people te uh, minister or, or preach or whatever, and you come out there going, man, I, ha I feel like I've been in some ecumenical, you know, ecclesiastical high order of service. They even spoke it Latin. I didn't understand a word it said, but everybody's supposed to go, whoa, whoa. I can't go live that. Are you here? It's like being in the classroom. Somebody going there. How many of you have ever been in a classroom and the, the teacher or professor was teaching way over your head? I'll be honest with you. Nath, last year, Nathan, I love his, his chemistry teacher. is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Really, really nice guy. Should be teaching advanced college chemistry and not high school. You start talking to him, and he just goes into another world. And he goes, and you see, and you, and you do this. I mean, he starts talking. And I, I went and tried to get help for Nathan. And so I thought, if I go in there and listen to him talk, maybe I'll be able to help Nathan. I came out, you're on your own, buddy. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm like, uh. <laughs> I mean, he just went off. I'm reading books, trying to figure out, now how can I help Nathan here? So I'm going to go talk to the teacher. That'll help. <laughs> Buddy, you are on your own. I mean, me and you together both are zero. <laughs> We're in deep trouble here. And it's like, if you could have just taken that and broken it down into terminology and stuff that was easy to digest, you might get it. So we can't do that in the church. We need to help people get it because the whole purpose is so you can live it. Amen. It's not so you can look smart. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. See, it doesn't do you any good for me to demonstrate to you how intelligent I am if you can't take what I'm telling you and go use it. Right. So we will make it easy. So, have you done got it? Got it. Got it. All right. Hallelujah. God's love for mankind has a nurturing element to it. God loves you. He's not out to get you. He did not say, for God so loved the world that he sent Jesus with a nuclear bomb to take out everybody who wouldn't obey. Does it? Well, what about the judgment of God? There is a side of the judgment of God, but I'm going to tell you something. That comes way at the end, not at the beginning. Some people think, listen, I'm going to tell you something. If, if God was operating like he did under the old covenant, San Francisco would have been halfway to whole, uh, uh, Japan long ago. That part of the United States has been chopped off and so floated out to sea a long time ago. Hello? New Orleans would have never been recovered. We would have never, it, it would have been the lost city like Atlantis. If God was going to get people right up the front. God, God is long-suffering. God loves humanity. Now let's go here to Ephesians chapter 2. 
Because I want you to know the law that we all talk about, the mama's love and stuff, is, is really, and, and let me say, understand this, it's denigrated from the love of God. It's not as strong as the love of God. All, of it, all that we have in it, because you know, even moms have a place where they, they draw the line. I'm not sure where it is, but they do. Hello. But look here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, and you hath he quickened. Who, let me just leave that hath he quickened. Hath he quickened is not in the Greek here. It is later on, but it's not here. So they put it up there. They thought they helped. But let's take it out. Now, I'm not changing the Bible. Italicized means it's not there. Added by the translators. They thought it helped you read easier. So let's read it the way the Greek said it. And you who were dead in trespasses and sins. How many were at least, at least were dead in your trespasses and sins? If you're breathing, raise your hand. Because you either were and or are right now dead in your trespasses and sins. Now, how many at least were at some point in time in your existence dead in your trespasses and sins? Okay, we got people not raise your hand. I mean, just, just raise your hands. <laughs> Keep them up. You were dead in your trespasses and sins. That's just the way it is. You were. Everybody was. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had, now here's King James, our conversation. Now conversation in Elizabethan English did not mean a verbal discourse. Okay? It wasn't two people talking. Conversation meant lifestyle or manner of life. So he says here, among whom also we all had our manner of life, our lifestyle in times past, this is how everybody's lifestyle was, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Stop. So God's word says here, but God, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, even when our lifestyle and nature was that of the ch uh, uh, being children of Satan, even when you lived out of the lust of the flesh and out of the mind, and that's, that, that's everybody. Everybody was there at least once. If you're born again now, things are different. But I am telling you, if you're not born again, if you were born again, this is in a reference to your past at some point in time. You lived out of the lust of the flesh and out of the lust of the mind. You know, you might look at one of the, you might look at somebody who thinks a holy Christian, you know, they at one time lived from the lust of their flesh and they fulfilled the desires of the flesh and of their mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. That categorized everybody. For, you know, Romans says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. And so that is a description of fallen man. He said, well, I'm a Christian now. Well, that's wonderful. I'm glad you're a Christian, but I'm trying to make a statement here about the love of God. Because even when that was what you were, even when you were living that, see, we got, sometimes as Christians, we forget where we came from. We get so caught up with who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, what belongs to us in Christ, how we're a new creation, and we don't want to talk about the old nature, and we don't want to, talk, we don't want to re rehearse the, you know, that we were sinners, and get, we don't want, obviously we don't want to get off and live there. <clears throat> then what I'm talking about here is when we go to deal with other people, you've got to remember where you came from too. It's so easy to get saved and to get high, as, high and pious and all lifted up by how great you are, how that you would never do such a thing. Well, you used to. I said you used to. You used to be a dark, dark rank sinner just like the people you, you don't have anything to do with anymore. And I'm telling you, we can't forget. Listen, in one sense, we need to forget where we came from from our relationship with God and receiving from God. On the other hand, when dealing with people, we can't forget where we came from. Because they're where you were at one point in time. Without hope, without God in this world. Alienated from the covenants of God. Separated. There's a wall of enmity between them. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that you, you've got to remember you came from that same place and have mercy and compassion on them. Amen. So that you can minister life to them. God wants us to be walking life givers. Amen? Hallelujah. So even when you were dead in your trespasses and sins, even when you were by nature the child of, a, a, a child of wrath, even as others. Oh, but I love this. I'm telling you, I like butts only when God gives butts. You got a lot of people saying, well, God heal, used to heal butt. I mean, he don't anymore. I don't like those kind of butts. That's man's butts. We don't like man butts. We like God's butts. 
Amen. And when God says, but, and it says here, but God, who is rich in mercy. Aren't you glad he's rich in mercy? Well, I'm saved. Well, you won't for his mercy, you wouldn't be. Hello? If it wasn't for his mercy, you wouldn't be. You know, don't you get your old, old high self and think you're somebody great? I'm the best Christian in this church. So stinking what? Hello? I don't give a rip. Neither does God. We've experienced his mercy. Thank God for his mercy. Amen. And when you go to deal with people who aren't born again, you've got to understand you came out of that same camp. You came out of that same place. <coughs> you were once lost, but now you've been found. Don't get so lit up and proud about what you've come into that you forget there are people still left there. Amen. 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 But God who is rich. Oh, thank God. I said, thank God he's rich in mercy. Let's go back to El Shaddai. There's, he's more than enough. There's enough mercy for everybody. There's enough mercy to extend to every human walking the planet. Even what you would consider the vilest, rankest of sinners in your, your thinking. God's mercy is greater than where they are. God loves humanity. Listen to this. For his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins hath quickened or made us, made us alive together with Christ by grace are you saved God looked down into the estate of man and just like that mother whose son could be going to the lecture chair says that's my baby God looked down and saw <coughs> humanity without hope and without God in this world and sent Jesus for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life God looked down into the estate, uh, the fallen estate, the degraded estate, the terrible estate of humanity, and did not say, wipe them out. He said, I've got a solution. Oh, praise God. Now, let me, I'm going to take a little side journey here. If God's got a solution that can redeem a whole world of people who rebelled against him, he's got a solution for your financial problem this week. I just want you to know that. Well, it don't look like it. You can't go by what you see. You can't go by how you feel. God's bigger than your, your situation. He's got the solution. The Word of God says He knows what you have need of before you ask or even before you think it or even ask it. What does that mean? If He knows it, He's already got the answer prepared. Well, I don't know. See, when, when, when a sinner... Those separated from God, those who come to the realization they're without God and without hope, come to that realization there is already the solution for them. Jesus is already ready. Hello? You don't need to go experiment with every type of weird sex you can come up with so you can expand yourself and, and come in contact with your inner consciousness and become into your Godhood and throw off the, the restraints of traditional values. That's not going to help you. It might kill you, but it won't help you. Hello? Are you here? Magic Johnson had relations with 20,000 women. And he got AIDS. And they've done a good job with some of the drugs to, to suppress it. But he's, he, he's got that for the rest of his life. And it will shorten his life if, if, you know, of course he gets saved and something like that. God can heal him. But I'm telling you, you can't do those kind of things and not, and not pay consequences. Are you here? Even in the state of, of those things, God's love and mercy is there. And you may be facing things in life that, are, that seem like there is no answer, there is no hope, there is no way out. But there is a God who said, but God who is rich in mercy, wherewith his lo great love, wherewith he loved us. Hallelujah. Have quickened or made you alive together with Christ. He even raised, now listen, as far as God's concerned, everything for your salvation is already taken care of. He's not going to send Jesus back to the cross. Hello? He's not going to crucify him again. He's not going to raise him from the dead again. He's already done that once. God loved you so much, he did it in advance with the faith that you would accept that and walk in the light of it. He did it with the knowledge that you could completely reject and not accept what he did for you. God loves you. Say, God loves me. Thank God.
I had a friend at Rama, um, Fawaz Fennec, or Fennec, 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 Fennec. He's over in Winston Salem now, and uh, Fawaz uh, grew up in Jordan. Fawaz's dream as a child was to grow up and join the Jordanian Air Force and go bomb the Jews. So we lovingly nicknamed him Fawaz, or Jordanian Jew bomber. Thank you. That's a joke, guys. <laughs> he got saved. All right? He, he, he found Jesus, praise God. He didn't, you know, and the funny thing he found out was when he got saved, he didn't want to go bomb the Jews anymore. It's amazing what happens when love gets in your heart. And there's a lot of hard people. And you may be saying, thinking, I'm too hard, or I'm too, I, you don't know what I've been through. No, I don't. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you, where you came from. I don't know your past. I don't know your history. I don't know if your mom and dad both left you and threw you out on the street and slapped you and all kinds of stuff, beat you. I mean, you tortured you. I mean, gave you over to an abusive family or whatever. I don't know any of those things, but I do this no much. God loves you. God didn't do that to you. Right. God wasn't the author or the, or, or the uh, purpose behind it. Some pinhead may come along and say, God had a reason. God didn't have a reason. God never did that. Right. God doesn't, doesn't hate humanity. God loves humanity. That's right. God doesn't cause parents to, to torture their children or abuse their children or have relatives come in and molest their children. That's not God. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. So now, people, t people say, God, sorry, God, has, no, God, God didn't do any of that. No. Satan is the author of evil. Yeah. Satan is evil. He hates God's creation. He hates mankind. He hates it, everything. Have, have you noticed that we got this big push? Now, I'm, I'm not really digressing. Stay with me here. But, you know, for everybody to be happy, you know, I mean, even the church is saying things like, you know, I mean, we shouldn't, we shouldn't try to cause anybody not to be happy. We should allow the homosexual, the transgender, the bisexual, the lesbian to all be married and have their children. You know, we should let, well, let's, 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 let's okay, stop. If you're going to do that, let's let the pedophile have their boys. Come on. We can't stop anybody's happiness. Let me say this. Let me say this. People in, in, in postmodernism and even secular humanists believe that the absolute destruction of the institution of marriage is vital to the propagation of their belief system. And that one of the things, in, in the main areas that they, they deal with is sex and sexual relations, and they all purport man-boy relationships. Now, don't you think for a minute that the next step, if they can get all this other stuff passed and instituted and becoming normal, the next step is what's to say that the man shouldn't have his 12-year-old boy? Roman Empire, that was what Rome was all about. Don't think it's not coming next. I don't believe that. I, I don't believe that. Yeah, 40 years ago you would have said, I don't believe that about all the, all the other stuff. You read the writings. I'm not, I'm not, this is not, this is, this is, this is historical fact. The leaders of these movements, their writings and their philosophies are written and recorded. It is out there and that is one of the ma next main things they want to purport is man-boy relationships. Why? Because God had a family before he had a church. The first institution ordained of God was the family. And I ain't talk, there ain't no family unless mom, and listen, if you're a divorced family, I understand that's different. I'm talking about it is not a family. If there's two adults in it, it's a man and a woman who are married with children. Amen. Two men and two women don't make family. One man who assigns himself to being a woman because he identifies with that in his inner being and another man, they, they got some, somebody, it's a man, it's a man, it's a first man to be pregnant. Well, it's, they've had gender reassignment, but they've got a womb. And they're calling it a man. No, it's a woman. Go check the, uh, the levels of, of hormones. She is a she. But they're calling him a man. Yeah, because he's had reassignment surgery. That don't mean nothing. You got these idiots out here having plastic surgery with, with things, implants put in to be lizards, having their tongues cut in half so they can wiggle them forth, and trying to get an organic tail put on. That ain't going to make them a lizard. <laughs> when they get done and they do a hormone test on them, it's going to be male and not male lizard. The reason I'm saying this is because Satan wants to attack the family. Because the family is the basis of the church. Are you here? God loves humanity. God loves family. 
Are you here? God loves people. But let me, don't think God is ordaining all this, all this stuff. And the reason I got on that is because some people tell you that God made you this way or God put you in an abusive situation. You were molested as a child and God, has, God never has a reason for a child to be molested. God's never behind that. And so somebody says, if you've, if you've had uh, things happen in your life and, and, and you, you were raped or you were molested or, uh, I mean, something evil happened to you, some family member did something to you and, and, and all that stuff, and then people have tried to tell you that God had a reason for that and, and you've hardened your heart and you've turned again. Let me say this. God, if God loved me, why did he, God didn't do that to you. I said God didn't do that to you. God loves you. God would never, ever harm you that way because he loves you are you here no satan is the author of evil if it kills steals and destroys it's from satan john 10 10 jesus said the thief cometh not but for two now that's that's king james for the only reason the devil comes is to steal kill and destroy but jesus said this i have come now understand you have a thesis and an, 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 an antithesis or antithesis. Antithesis. That's just, when you hear somebody say antithesis, it's just antithesis or the opposite. So the thesis of that statement is Satan kills, steals, and destroys. The antithesis or the opposite of it was Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So I always tell people, get yourself a piece of paper, draw and make four columns down the piece of paper. Then, then across the top of each column, write one word, write steal, kill, destroy, life. And then everything that happens in your, happens in your existence, good, bad, indifferent, write it where it fits those categories. Does it steal from you? Does it kill? Does it destroy? Or does it produce life? Write it all out. When you get done, go back up to the top and do one of those little uh, squirrely things and tie the, the steal, kill, and destroy together with an arrow pointing up and write Satan. Over top of the life column, put God. There's where it's coming from. If it steals, kills, destroys, it's coming from Satan. If it's life, it's coming from God. Amen. Amen. That's what Jesus said. Well, I don't believe that. God has a reason for killing somebody AIDS. No, he doesn't. Why do people get AIDS? They sin. God told them not to sin. God didn't send to AIDS because people sin. He said don't sin because to keep you out of trouble. Hello? Now we don't have any young, you don't have any young, anybody under 13 in here? When the Spaniards got off the ship in South America, they had relations with llamas. Gonorrhea came from that. Or syphilis, one to two. That's where it came from. Then it got back into the human population because of relations, bestiality, bestiality. I know that's sick. God didn't give them that. Hello? Are you here? God didn't do that to them. Sin did. He told them not to do that. Why? Because you will engage in something that will cause, it will kill, still, or destroy your body. It will, it will cause wreak havoc in you. God didn't do that to them. Let me say this, God didn't put you in a household so some, uh, some, some boyfriend of your, uh, some live-in boyfriend of the person you're living with could rape you. God didn't do that. God loves you. Oh, if he loves me, why didn't he? Because mankind has to make decisions. He sent the answers. But we got people rejecting those answers. We have a movement to try to stop God from operating in anywhere, any, any arena at all. And I can't remember if it's a post-humanist or a secular, a post modern post-humanist. Well, I've been next them up now. They need to keep me straight, buddy. The post or are the, the secular humanists. But one, one of those belief systems says this, that organized religion shouldn't even be allowed. Now, if you want to have individual, private, that's okay. But you shouldn't even be able to have an organized religion. You should be able to come to church. They're out to stop that. Why? Because they don't want people to find out God's the answer, not the problem. God's not the one that did it to you. God's not the one that took your mama. And I want to say something. My mama was a Christian. She died. He didn't take her. He received her, but he didn't take her. There's a difference. There's a big difference between receiving and taking. Amen. 
Who's got some money? Pull out your wallet. Just, just somebody, hold up some money. Hold up some money somewhere. Just hold up some money. And just sit there and hold it up in the air. All right. Just sit there and hold it up in the air. As a matter of fact. Oh. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. I better, I, better, I better not take too much. <laughs> now, they held it up. They didn't say, hey, Pastor Ed, if you want this, come get it, did you? No. Did you say that? No. no. Did you say that? What did you do? You, you just Why? held it up. What did I do? I took it. Now, they're both, I know what he's thinking right now. <laughs> he wants it back. <laughs> he's, he's like, I, 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 he's watching it. <laughs> See what I do with it. <laughs> Let's see here. We, we got, is that all you got in here? Oh, that's a 20. Years. Okay. <laughs> With interest. I think I had more than that. <laughs> all right. Now, who loves Pastor Ed? Yeah. Anybody want to bless me this morning? Anybody want to bless me this morning? Sure, we'd like Pastor Ed. <laughs> well, who's going to bless me? <laughs> How? Anybody got any money you're going to bless me with? <laughs> oh, thank you. Larry, Larry says, here, come Pastor, come get it. Now, let me say something here. There's a difference between me walking back here and receiving the money that Larry has for me right now. How much is that, brother? Let's see here. Praise God. Uh, that'll buy, buy, buy me a couple of cheer wine slushies. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, I just, now I did, did you see me go st take, rip that out of his hand? <laughs> I received it. Yeah. There, I took it. Right. Amen. There's a difference between taking and receiving. Now, God may look, may come into the earth and a Christian die. But that wouldn't mean that God came down and killed them yeah. and took them out of the earth. But when they did die, he received them because they're his. There's a difference. One, in, one implies forced retrieval. The other is welcomed re reception. There's a big, there's a difference between the two. God's not in the business of killing so he can take it. I've heard sermons at funerals. I'm telling you some of the dumbest things that have been said at funerals. The Lord looked over the banister of heaven and saw all the rose in the earth and he plucked it from the earth to put it on the heavenly mantle. I got the idea that God can come up with all kinds of roses without plucking the earth. Yeah. Are you here? And I, was, I was actually at a funeral when that was being done, and the wife's over there going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, ha! <coughs> oh. <laughs> Shut him, Lord. Shut him up. <coughs> it's not God. Larry, I'm going to give you $10 for that, buddy. <laughs> Hallelujah. He gave it to me. All right, well, that's three of the big cheer wine slushies. Praise God. <laughs> Bless the pastor day. Cheer wine slushy day. For the great love where we're, see, God loves humanity so much that he sent Jesus. Jesus came and became sin for us who knew no sin. He never committed an act of sin. He never sinned. He never rebelled. He was never disobedient to the will of the Father. Yet he accepted man's sinful nature so we could become the righteousness of God in him. We could have a right relationship with the Father. Now, if he did that for mankind when they were lost in their sin, for his great love wherewith he loved us, he has made us alive together with Christ, by grace are you saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is this. What's he going to do? Then in the ages to come, he might, uh, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace uh, in his kindness towards us through Christ. Jesus. God's just going to sit there and show you the exceeding greatness of his riches of his grace throughout eternity because he loves you. This God of love, how could you believe that he did the evil things to you that mankind says he did to you? One writer says in, the, in these, in these, um, these mindsets that we've talked about that, that, men, that marriage is the most evil, vicious institution on earth. 
that the, 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 you probably have figured this out by now, that what college professors do that have this, these, these, these positions, and 90% of them do, is their job is when you get to college, is to destroy every value, every tradition, everything in your life that your parents put in you so they can rebuild you in a postmodernist mindset. Because they hate what God has done. And they tell you that religion is evil. That religion does destructive things. Well, religion may, but Jesus don't. And they tell you that all the evils of the world have been done in the name of religion. That's, that's just garbage. The evil in this world has been done. The stealing, the killing, and destroying has been done by the author of it, Satan himself, and his cohorts. God sent Jesus because he loves mankind. He sent Jesus to redeem mankind. Yeah, people use certain things to, to wrongly. They're inspired of the devil to do so. Satan tried to use the word of God against Jesus. They didn't make the word evil. It meant Satan manipulated it. Doesn't it? Satan manipulated the word. Remember, he was, Jesus went out into the wilderness and was tempted 40 days of the devil, and Satan came to him and started quoting the word. And Jesus quoted it back. Yeah. Amen? First thing he did says, you know, if you be the son of God, turn the stone into bread. Jesus said, this, thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so Satan comes back to him and takes him up on the pinnacle of the temple and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and says, all this is mine for it's being delivered unto me. I will, give, I will give it you if you'll just bow down and worship me. Jesus said, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, him only shalt thou worship. Amen. Or too many high places show that. Then he took him to the pinnacle of the temple and said, cast yourself down. See, Jesus has been using the word on him, so now he's going to turn the word and try to manipulate the word for evil purposes. Cast yourself down from thence, for it is written that his angels shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against the sun. And Jesus said, it is also written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So there's a lot of things been done in the name of religion that's just Satan manipulating things so that people we can turn, turn against the things of God. Take the whole. God loves you. I said, God, even when you were dead and lost and alienated from him, I mean, let's face it, folks. If your kids are in trouble, both parents are going to go to the nth degree to rescue them. If the neighbor kids are in trouble, they'll just say, that's their problem. Hello? But God looked into the world where mankind had become Satan's child. I don't believe that. Where are you, John 8, 44? What did Jesus say in John 8, 44? Anybody remember? Ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will fulfill if you ain't saved Satan's your daddy yeah your daddy Papa was a rolling stone alright anyway <laughs> I mean, when you ain't saved your daddy's a rolling stone Satan's a rolling stone come on come on, come on guys lighten up I know y'all thinking, man, if he goes too long, they're going to beat us to Olive Garden. We're going to have a six-hour wait. <laughs> Hello. Why aren't you glad there's two Olive Gardens in the area now? You can, you can uh, cut that in half to three hours. It's a joke. Understand that Satan was your spiritual father. And even in that state, God the Father sent Jesus to redeem you out of that estate and reconcile you to himself. Why? For his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when you were alienated from him, even when you rebelled against him, even when you were doing things that were contrary to everything that he is and wanted to do, he loved you and sent Jesus. So even though mama may look at her baby going to the lecture chair and say, that's my baby, that's my baby, that's my baby. That type of love, that committed love came not from a cosmic universe, but from God himself. It is a, 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 a watered down, but it is a reflection of God's love for you. That no matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how, how bad it's been, he still loves you. And he has the answer for your situation. He has the answer for who you are. He has the answer for your future. And it's found in being born again, receiving Jesus Christ as Lord. He, will he, he has sent him to redeem you from destruction. Save you from your own self. 
and he'll reconcile you to himself so you can know and experience how good it is to be born of God. Can we bow our heads please? Father, I thank you. You've directed me in this fashion, in this manner this day. And I ask you that as we've been here together, dealt with the hearts of men and women, and in that place, I ask, Father, and thank you that you've dealt with them concerning your love for them, your care for them, your concern for them. And we receive now the result of that in Jesus' name. If there be anybody here today, you're not born again. You've never come into that intimate personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You've been told a lot of religion. You've been told God's mad at you. God's not mad at you. I want to tell you this morning, God's not angry with you. God loves you with a love that's greater than anything you've ever experienced. And if you're here today and you don't know that love, would you please raise your hand if you want to receive and walk in that love? You can come into the family of God. I'm not asking you to join our church. I'm asking you, do you want to know God? Do you want to have an intimate personal relationship with the one who can deliver you from all your, your distresses and all your troubles? And say, Pastor Ed, I've been born again, but I've been a Christian or saved for a number of years, but I'm backslidden. Now, backslid is real simple. You ain't where you used to be. You've gone backwards. You've gone the way of the world. You've gone into sin. You're not living for God. You know you need to be, but whatever's happened, something's happened. You're mad. You're angry. You're ticked off. You don't want anything to do with God. But this morning, he's dealt with your heart. And you need to get right with him. Would you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. All right. Thank you. Look up at me. Stand up. Come on, stand up. Just want to make sure everybody had an opportunity. We don't let anybody go that doesn't know Jesus. Praise the Lord. We want to make sure you know him. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you for coming today. Tonight at 630, we'll have our prayer time and, uh, and uh, at church, and then also youth church at 630. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our time together. Thank you that you've blessed the people. Thank you that you've ministered to them. Those who may be going through difficult places and difficult, oh, hallelujah, difficult times. I thank you, Father, that you've ministered to them. Because your love even works after you become a Christian. Your love is manifest to us as believers. And so I thank you. You've talked to the hearts. You've spoken to them. You've revealed your love for them in a wonderful way this day. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And, if, and who's here this morning that uh, you're having um, back issues, back problems, your back's bothering you for some reason? Who is that? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, amen. Wow. Well, <laughs> aren't you glad I didn't say go home? <laughs> Hallelujah. Get him up here a little bit closer, guys. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. All right. Praise God. While we're doing this, you know, just uh, if you're in the congregation, uh, hallelujah, just go ahead and stretch your hands out to him. Praise the Lord. We thank God for his, his word. We thank God for the gifts of the Spirit. Thank God for the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, praise God. We thank you. We thank you, Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, before, before I start praying for them, if you've been, somebody's been, somebody's, or somebody, has been dealing with headaches. If that's you, come on up and get down there on the other end down there. Somebody direct them down there. De who's got that one? Been dealing with headaches, chronic headaches. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lay hands on, on, on Christy. We thank you that, that the anointing goes into her back. We thank you that the pain goes. We thank you that she's made whole in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We speak life over this body. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Oh, healing now in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We lay hands on oh, it blades back. We command help and healing to come. Hallelujah. We thank you that the healing anointing goes into him and his back's made whole in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With their hands on her, in the name of Jesus, and thank you that he. Oh, oh so yeah, yeah, yeah. Straighten that out. Straighten that out. The muscles relaxed. Straighten. Uh, yeah, ha, 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 ha. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, with a hand. Oh, our dear sister. And thank you that healing anointing goes into her. Her back is made every whole pain goes. Pain goes. Pain goes. Hallelujah. Straight corrections. Corrections. Corrections in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold. 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 Healing.
<laughs> for this back now in Jesus name we are sakamada bakada behold <laughs> in Jesus name we curse these headaches we command oh, oh all the tension all the blood vessels to flow freely every aspect every every constriction in, 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 in go, yeah worry worry go 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 for, go from her go yeah yeah go <laughs> ooh ooh <laughs> In the name, um, um, knee. Who's got a who's got a a knee injury? I don't know if it's an injury or chronic knee problem. I mean, popping or something. Who is that? Come on, come on, come on. Now, listen, I'm just trying to describe what I got sent kind of thing. If you got a knee problem, which one is it? <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you heal this knee, you make it whole. We thank you there's a restoration of cartilage. We thank you that everything in the knee is lined up properly. We thank you that all the fluids in the knee are right levels. We thank you that the tendons, oh, hallelujah, and the ligaments are all ha, 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 ha. Behold, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, knees. Knees. Both knees? Yeah. yeah. But in the name of Jesus, we thank you. The healing anointing goes in. <laughs> knees healed. Knees healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, be made whole in Jesus' name. Healed. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. Blood flow. Blood flow. Blood flow. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Which one? Um, this one? That one. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for this name. Thank you. Thank you for restoration. Wholeness. In Jesus' name be made. Whole. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. Be made whole. Restored. 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 Cart cartilage. Cartilage replaced. <laughs> And made whole, <laughs> made whole in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. I love your presence. In the name of Jesus. Restoration from the injury and wholeness now. In Jesus' name. Made whole in the name of Jesus. Completely restored. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, I don't know. Some have been dealing with early stages of arthritis. Somebody been dealing with early stages of arthritis? Just sense somebody is. Inflammation in your joints. But you maybe hadn't even been diagnosed, but you know you're, you're, you're dealing with it. Is that you? You're, well, no more. No more. We command arthritis to cease. Ha! And rescind and be gone in Jesus' name. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Which was? In the neck, maybe? In Jesus' name. Go from her. Be made whole. In Jesus' name. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Let's lift your hands to the Lord and say, thank you, Lord. Jesus is the healer. Now, some of you we prayed for, if you were hurting this morning, do something you couldn't do. Do something you couldn't do. Hallelujah. That was bothering you to do it. Hallelujah. Who, who can do something you couldn't do before? I, I, of those that came this morning, you were, you, it was bothering you this morning, whatever we prayed for you, is it bothering you now? Stand and raise your hand if it's not bothering you right now that you really got prayed for. All right. Well, praise God. <laughs> uh -huh. Who's been having a problem in your jaws? Pain in your, in your, in your jaw joint sockets. Come on. Somebody. It bothers you right in here. Who are you? I done prayed about that. Well, if it's bothering you, come on. I know somebody is. Who are you? We'll wait. Your jaw bothers you. It may, it may not be bothering you right now, but it, does, it, it comes and goes and bothers you. We're not talking about right this second. 
God knows you've been dealing with it. He wants to get rid of it. <laughs> it comes and goes. Which y'all? Which side? In the name of Jesus, be made whole. <laughs> whole. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. No more. No more. No more. Why aren't you glad you came to church? <laughs> well, were you planning on what prayer? Nope. I'm going to tell you something, folks. God does what he wants to do when he wants to do it, and I ain't got nothing to do with it except obey. I don't get to choose, pick and choose. You come next week, and, I, and we don't pray for anybody. Why? Because he runs things. I just, I'm just looking. I'm a dog on the leash with him. Hello? He takes me out for a walk, says, go here, go there, and I just do what he says to. <laughs> Praise God.